So, ladies and gents, um, technology. Um, what exactly is technology? At the IFR, we continuously ask ourselves, how do we categorize technology? And uh, we normally try to take technology into five different spheres. Um, we talk about energy, uh, materials tech, um, uh, all the way to, to biotech, transport, and then ICT. But as futurists, um, we extrapolate from the past, so we learn from the past. Um, we can take simple concepts like the fuel efficiency of a vehicle and extrapolate that into the future. It's not always a straight line. We have to make a fit. Um, we also put future goals. And then the third technique that we use is we sometimes look at what we call um, dots on the horizon, the things that, that, that is already happening. We also try to compare these things. I'm, I'm a big, a big um, lover of electric vehicles. Now this is a very simple graph that just looking at the growth in hybrid vehicles and the growth in electric vehicles over the same time period. So the axis at the bottom is months from introduction. And what you will see is the bar on top, the orange bar is electric vehicles. So electric vehicles are growing on a monthly basis a lot quicker than what hybrid vehicles uh, grew. There are also trends that move in the opposite direction. Um, this is the first sobering one. I may not take you to the depth that Andre took us to, um, but still this shows the relative position of South Africa um, on the international benchmark ICT index. Um, but you can see that South Africa has the distinction to have moved over the last 11 years from position number 34 in the world, which was roughly where our economy is ranked in global economies as well, to position number 75. The leading nation is Finland, and um, I know it's a little bit small, um, but you can get the idea, it's from the political and the regulatory environment right down into 10 different aspects. And um, Finland would then be presented by the brew. You can see the United States in the seventh position hugging them. We do have certain things in place. It's the willpower to execute and to ensure that we do these things, which is really the problem. So ladies and gents, um, for me, um, this is probably the most innovative vehicle of the year 2015. And I want to use this to explain to you how difficult it is sometimes to predict about technology futures. And this vehicle that they launched last year um, is an absolute amazing vehicle which has got a roughly 500 kilometer range on a tank and depending on which model you're getting, uh, apologies, on a battery, it's a pure electrical vehicle. But what I found interesting when I read his book is, is if you're saying, so, so what does Tesla do? Is Tesla a transport company? Are they working in transport technologies? And the reality is, is it's not a transport company. It's a company that does a lot more than transport. And a beautiful part of the Tesla vehicle is like your laptop. Sometimes at night your laptop's d uh, d light is flashing. The software on your laptop will update itself so that when you start it up tomorrow morning, it looks different from when you shut it down last night. Now the same thing happens with this Tesla as well. Every night that you uh, park it in the garage, it could potentially get an update. And the update that sent shivers through the whole world, all the technology people needed to have castle light was um, semi-autonomous driving. So in October, all of the drivers woke up one morning and said, today you can take off your hands off the steering wheel because overnight the Tesla got some software that's using the sensors that was already in the vehicle when it was manufactured. Now, ladies and gents, um, if you look at something like robotics, you've probably all seen ASIMO, um, this little uh, robot from Honda. Um, it's amazing, the first time that Honda showed him to the world, he actually fell over his own feet. And um, the reason it's not that simple to walk, it takes brilliant human beings a year to learn to walk. It's that decision making, that ability, making sense of the environment around you to make the best management decisions that we see from the robotics and the artificial intelligence worlds moving into the boardrooms um, right across the world and most certainly um, in South Africa as well. But that, ladies and gentlemen, brings me to the question of so what? And um, in so what, I would like to share with you my favorite quote for the year 2015. The world's largest taxi firm, Uber, doesn't own a single vehicle. The world's most popular media company, Facebook, um, creates no content. The world's most valuable retailer, Alibaba, valuable in terms of market capital, um, has no stock. And the world's largest accommodation provider, Airbnb, um, owns no properties. So ladies and gents, on, on to the topic, um, a couple of pointers, just a, from this vast scope of thing, one or two things that I'd like to share with you. The first one I want to highlight is 3D printing. Now 3D printing is extremely boring if you get the concept. And um, I thought I'd just share three examples if you haven't seen it. The one on the top left is printing a house. And that particular technology was used to print 10 houses in 24 hours in China. Top right is printing uh, pharmaceuticals. If you have six or eight of the key elements, you can print most of the drugs that you need. And then the one in the bottom, ladies and gentlemen, is the world's first completely printed 3D car. What we're seeing now is the materials that we can actually use to 3D print. We use titanium 
And in an operating theater, we print the prosthesis for a patient at that particular point in time. Not something that needs to be ordered weeks in advance. The doctors start the medical procedure, they scan the patient's, the patient's physical properties, and within the operating theater, they from titanium, they print that prosthesis that they need to implant at that particular point in time. The one that is extremely common in, in, in all areas is um, connectivity. And, and, and people talk about the cloud, and they talk about hyper connectivity, and they talk about the internet of things, and the internet of everything. They say that on average, people check their mobile phones about 150 times a day. And there are some that said they will never go five minutes without checking their mobile phones. The one technology that I thought I might just point out because it's not that widely known and I think it's, it's set to spread fairly quickly is Li-Fi. And, and Li-Fi is why do we use optic fibers to communicate over long distances? Because light is by a distance the best way to communicate. You can take a normal light like that and on the light you superimpose the communication at a rate about a hundred times faster than Wi-Fi, it's called Li-Fi, you need line of sight, but not direct line of sight, where, you can, where the light reaches. So if it's light around the corner, it's not like infrared that needs line of sight, where the light reaches within the light, is this very high frequency modulating, and any device can, can actually pick that up. And if you look at the amount of traffic um, globally, the green bar represents human activity, about 27% in 2014 of internet traffic was human activity, us going, um, that includes downloading movies and looking at movies and all of these things that we do. Um, whereas the blue bar is talking about that is human traffic, but not humans physically behind the keyboard. It's traffic that our devices create on our behalf. The net effect for, for enterprises is that we become data driven. Um, if there's one thing that I have become blissfully obvious of over the last year, is that I have a lot more information about a student that's sitting in the middle of the Kalahari Desert attending classes online and writing tests online than a student that I see every day within the classroom. Um, on the energy space, um, there's so many interesting things happening. I mentioned briefly on the Smart Grid Initiative. Um, that web address over there is actually a real-time map of Denmark. And in Denmark, every second of every day, you can see how electricity is flowing in and out of every single node in that entire country. It's absolutely amazing to see. On the renewable side, um, we've had some massive breakthroughs in University of Stellenbosch. Technology that always needed to be at a massive scale, we've now been able to scale down. And then in terms of AI and robotics, I think the best definition of robotics and AI is doing the things that Hollywood have been having them do for the last 40 years. And there's lots of fascinating applications. And what we're seeing that this artificial intelligence, the ability to use computer algorithms to make sense of the world all around us, is becoming massively powerful to supplement human beings in decision making. In terms of, of robotics, um, I thought this is a, is a stunning example. The one on the top left is already operational. If you order room service in many hotels in Japan, um, then a robot is actually delivering the room service, which is absolutely brilliant. You don't have to get dressed quickly when somebody knocks on the door. Um, on the bottom left, agricultural robots, very big in Canada. On the top right is a robot ambulance being piloted in, by Delft University in the Netherlands. And then on the bottom right is Amazon's um, future delivery service. The final um, serious thing that I want to leave with you before I wrap up, ladies and gentlemen, is cybersecurity. Um, it is very, very clear to all researchers globally and all of the incidents that we are seeing that this hyper-connected world has massive consequences that we haven't thought through yet. In the business environment, in certain environments, your typical IT environment have got very strong cybersecurity controls. But when your car is connected, when your fridge is connected, when your Tesla is connected, when your surgical robot is connected, when your fish tank is connected, when everything in your home is connected, um, we're creating an environment where literally anything can be hacked. Right, that's my story. The final scary one was the singularity. There's a point in any technology's development that it develops so quickly and finds so many applications that we have no idea what will happen then. And artificial and robotics most definitely is on that trajectory where we say there's a point that we don't know. It doesn't necessarily have to be scary, but it could be, and these three gentlemen are certainly warning us about that. Thank you very much.